My last video was all, yeah, go for it, go for the big idea, just start. Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! I hope you got so motivated because today we're turning this ship 180 degrees. Remember when I said, commit first, figure it out later? So you committed last time, great. Now we're figuring it all out. Projects often fail due to various circumstances. When a project fails, the management and the teams get together to discuss why it failed, and they hold something that's called a postmortem for the project. After it failed, you analyze what went wrong. There can be heated discussions, a lot of emotions, anger, a lot of blaming and finger pointing. You can hear things like, we failed because of marketing, it was the logistics department mistake, or how are we supposed to know the customers wouldn't like our product? We certainly did everything right. You learn from your mistakes, of course, but there's a problem here. It's too late. At this point, you can only hope not to make the same mistake again in the future. How could this be avoided? or at least anticipated. Were we so in love with the idea that we didn't see the risks? So let's fix it. This is the pre-mortem technique. Once you've committed to a project and there's no looking back, figure out how you're going to make it happen. And to do this, we will analyze everything that can go wrong with the project and find solutions. I first heard about this idea from James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits. He briefly mentioned it in an interview, but it caught my attention. He calls it the failure premortem. I did some research on the technique and it seemed interesting to give it a try. This is actually a common managerial strategy. And the reason I like it is that it removes a lot of bias. When people work hard on a plan, they become overconfident in the success of the project and they are psychologically committed to seeing it happen and to seeing it succeed. But they can also be blind to some of the risks. So when you start with the premise that the project will fail, that eliminates the optimism bias where people think they're less likely to experience something negative. You know, the classic, that's not going to happen to me. And so I like it um, for another reason, and that is because it focuses our attention on working through the solutions. A team can get more open, more creative, and better prepared for any issues that might arise. And when those issues do arise in the future, or possibly arise in the future, the team knows exactly how to identify them and how to tackle them. This technique works whether applied in a company with a team or for an individual project. There are three simple steps to perform a premortem technique. Step one, anticipate what issues the project or the goal might have. Set aside some uninterrupted time where you can focus on the project and have all the stakeholders and all the decision makers present as well. If it's a personal goal of yours, you can still invite a friend who will help you in this process. Now, imagine that six months from now, your project fails. List down all the reasons and all the causes you think it will fail, but be realistic. This is a brainstorm of doom. So let's say for the sake of argument that I have a goal and my goal is to save a certain amount of money by the end of the year. Why will this fail? There are external causes, of course, such as the economy goes bad or I might lose my job and therefore don't have any income or there's a global pandemic that will hit us all and we don't know what to do. So yeah, there are a lot of external causes but there are also a lot of internal causes as well. And it takes a lot of honesty and a lot of courage to understand our internal reasons and get the problems out in the open. So going back to the example, my goal will fail. I can't save money by the end of this year because 
I'm constantly upgrading my lifestyle. I spend too much. I live paycheck to paycheck, so I don't have enough to save. I go into debt. I'm not financially organized. I have bad spending habits, etc. Really be honest with yourself in this step. Step two, prioritizing the most threatening concerns of failure on the top and then work your way down to least threatening. If there are too many causes in step one, you can choose top 10 that you think are most likely to be a threat. Many people in this step are afraid to admit the possibility of failure. And so when you work this technique, it will help you identify the roadblocks that could make your plan fail. And finally, step three, brainstorm a list of solutions for each item on the list, and especially for your top three most threatening and most likely that's gonna happen. And find realistic solutions. Really go granular here and go into as many details as you can and be prepared for whatever these top three concerns might be. So going back to our example, let's say my number one threat is not being financially organized. That's my issue. Great, now what's the solution? Pause this video and think about it for a moment. If someone came up to you and asked you that question or had this problem, what would you say to that person? What advice would you give that person? I can share just a couple of solutions that I can think from the top of my head, but there are so many more. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. For my goal to be a success, I need to create a system that helps me be more aware of my finances. So my solutions could be create a budget for multiple categories and stick to it, track my expenses, pay myself first, list all fixed and variable expenses, etc. What else would you add here? Let me know in the comments below. When done in a company, this technique is a great team building exercise. The teams can brainstorm in small groups or individually. And I like this because everybody has an opportunity and a way to raise their opinions about this project. So whether you brainstorm in small groups or individually, really have the teams be as imaginative as they want, holding nothing back while they still keep the threats realistic. The team will then be challenged to find solutions, taking into account the risks, the opportunities, and of course the impact on the company. So these are the three simple steps. Find the issues, prioritize them, and find solutions. But this exercise doesn't stop here. So once the solutions have been identified, they should be attached to a person responsible for that solution. So it would look something like this. Here we have the concern, here we have the possible solutions, and who is responsible for implementing that solution. That way, team members feel valued for their expertise and intelligence, and the more knowledge you have about a project, and the more buy-in you have from the team, the more likely that it will work like clockwork. Let's take a look at Airbnb. Airbnb encourages its employees to predict the company's downfall. They call it the Airbnb killer, where the staff can voice any concerns they have. The employees identify potential hiccups and the entire team is aware of the potential pitfalls and they brainstorm solutions to solve them. They anticipate what issues their customers might have, how to expand into other markets and other branches, and really anything else that might kill the company. So it's a great strategy that big companies implement. But there is an external cause that no one could predict, and I don't think Airbnb were able to predict a global pandemic, which had a huge negative impact on the company. Nevertheless, Airbnb found solutions for this issue as well. They partnered with top surgeons to train hosts on how to disinfect the properties. They also required rooms to be empty for at least 24 hours between guests, and the guests can actually choose rooms that have been vacant for more than 24 hours. The full link to this article is in the description below. Now, I wonder, 
What if they could anticipate it? Do you think they would have had other solutions in place? I guess we'll never know, but we can control what we can control. Failure itself is not a good thing, obviously. It can decrease morale, it can waste money, it can even damage a company's reputation. But preparing for the worst is probably one of the best ways to fix what's not working and to ensure the company's stability and prosperity. This technique is a low cost and high payoff. It helps you manage failure and build team strength. Give it a try yourself for a project you want to start. Identify any possible pitfalls that this project will have, and that way you will be more prepared. Commit to your goal, absolutely, just like we talked in the previous video right here. Commit to it, just do it, just take the first step. And once you've done that part, figure it out, make it happen. That was my message for today. I hope you really liked it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. That way the YouTube algorithm will know this is worth watching. And if you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice, just so I really, really get it that you didn't like it. Well, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to tune in again next week for the next video. Bye.